my name's Tom Dufour. I'm, I'm the uh, founder of Big Sky Franchise Team. And today we're going to go through a bunch of franchise data points. Um, if you have not subscribed to our podcast, Franchise Your Business, please do so. You can subscribe to that, whether it's through uh, Apple, Spotify, your favorite podcast service, or through YouTube. It's all available there. Uh, and then we will repurpose and rebroadcast this as a live recording starting uh, next week, about midweek, we will have this recording live. So with that, I am going to go ahead and share my screen so that we can jump right into our session today. And I will try to have us done, have this done by the bottom of the hour. All right. So the first report I'd like to take a look at, this is my one of my favorite reports we look at, which is from the Institute for Supply Management Report on Business. And they have what they call the Manufacturing PMI, which is the Purchasing Managers Index. And what we can see here is that it registered in last month uh, for January at 49.1%. Okay, so the U.S. manufacturing sector, it says in January, uh, 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 sector contracted in January as the manufacturing PMI registered 49.1%, up two percentage points compared to December's seasonally adjusted numbers. So uh, it says this is the highest reading since October of 2022 when the PMI registered a seasonally adjusted 50%. This is the 15th month of contraction. Three out of five sub-indexes that directly factor into the manufacturing PMI are in contraction territory down from four in December. So what I like to see here is, as it's stated, it's the highest number since October of 2022. So you can see uh, back in 22 on my screen, if you're, if you're watching this live, about uh, October 2022, it dips into contraction territory, all of 23 in contraction. And now we start to see this trend. It looks like we're trending upward. We're seeing three months in a row here. Uh, let's see if we can keep that trend going, right? And what I like about the PMI, especially for manufacturing, manufacturing is a leading indicator for us. So that's one of the reasons I really like this to show the manufacturing, because it gives us a sense of where we're going to be 12 to 24 months from now uh, as, as an overall economy. Okay. Uh, so we're in contraction, but near that break even uh, for manufacturing. Now let's take a look at services. Now, obviously, service uh, the U.S. is mostly a services-driven uh, economy with the highest percentage of the, of the businesses being there. And it says in January, services PMI registered 53.4%, a 2.9 percentage point increase compared to the seasonally adjusted December reading of 50.5%. So a reading above 50% indicates that uh, the sec uh, services sector economy is generally growing, okay? And then you can see <clears throat> that that's the general break-even. So we see that services is starting to tilt up for us here based off of numbers in January. So what I like here is we see services up manufacturing trending up, right? The highest number we've seen in 15 months or so, 16 months. Uh, so to me, these are good things. Now we see ones above break even, ones below break even. And we've seen this trend where we've had some of these reports just above break even, just below break even. Ultimately to me is part of that that tension that, that you're probably feeling in, in your own business or just the economy at large. There's this tension where, is it growing? Is it contracting? And it's just kind of hovering. It's bouncing right around that, that break-even threshold. Uh, so these, these macro indicators help give some uh, answers as to why we might be feeling that tension in our own uh, local or small business. Now, let's take a here, look here. This is their third index. This is the newest index from the Institute for Supply Management. <clears throat> this is the hospital PMI. And you can see a big surge here that occurred in Q4 of 2023 into uh, the January of 2024. So we see that uh, the hospital PMI registered 61.5% in January, one percentage point decrease from the January reading of 16, 62.5%, indicating a fifth consecutive month of growth after a contraction in August. So uh, this it says new orders index remained in expansion for the fifth straight month, and the employment index also remained in expansion territory. So um, you know uh, overall we see this the the hospital and healthcare is becoming such a large uh, 
part of the general economy that they started creating this index. So we can see um, that that hospital PMI, so purchaser managers are thinking, hey, we've got to be reordering more supplies. They're buying stuff is, is what's going on. They're buying products and goods. Um, so we can get an indication of what's going on. Um, so let's see how this continues to progress. But we have three indicators here of upward trend. Uh, hospital did contract from December to January, but as a whole, it's still, if you can see these readings on the chart here, it's the second highest reading in almost two years on this chart since tw uh, early 2022. So uh, just worth noting there uh, uh, from what I can tell. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's take a quick look at, um, let's see. Okay, let's take a quick look at the unemployment rate. So I like to take a look at the unemployment rate. This is from tradingeconomics.com. They publish, uh, they pull data from the U.S. Census Bureau for the uh, unemployment rate. And it says the unemployment rate in the United States held at 3.7% in January 2024, unchanged from the previous month and slightly below the market consensus of 3.8%. The activity rate was also flat at 62.5% last month, remaining the, at the lowest level since February of 2023. The number of unemployed individuals decreased by 144,000 to 6.12 million, while the count of employed individuals dropped by 31,000 to 161.15 million. So what do we see here? Well, we're seeing total labor participation rate looks like it dropped a little bit. If we see unemployed decreased a little bit and total employed decreased a little bit. So that could have something to do, I think, with uh, seasonal workers that may have been in for uh, seasonal uh, jobs, whether it be due to weather or due to uh, the Christmas shopping season that occurs. Either way, 3.7% uh, is a relatively low unemployment rate. We can see here it's been 3.7 the last three months on this chart, 3.8. Um, but uh, this is by far uh, the number one, uh, it, it ten, typically the number one issue I hear from our clients over and over and over again is staffing and people. Um, <clears throat> can I share the cart charts? Uh, yes, I sure will. Uh, I will share the charts and the links uh, that get published in the podcast and the episode. Absolutely. I include links back to all of them. And in fact, if you want to see uh, most of these links uh, in uh, last month's episode, uh, the, the links should be copied and pasted there uh, if you don't want to wait to get the links until it, uh, we, we publish the recording until um, until next month, or excuse me, until next week. Um, so uh, we, we can definitely make sure you get those. Okay, perfect. Great question. Thank you for that. All right, let's take a look at the U.S. inflation rate. OK, so inflation is on everybody's mind. Um, it, it's a topic of discussion that comes up often. And it says the U.S. inflation rate, the annual inflation rate in the U.S. fell back to 3.1 percent in January 2024, following a brief increase to 3.1, 3.4 percent in December, but came higher than forecasts of 2.9 percent. So you may have seen the other day that the stock market uh uh, had it looked like some kind of a sell-off, a little bit of a, a drop in uh, market valuation uh, when the inflation rate came out that it was higher than anticipated at the 3.1%. Uh, so what does this mean? Well, just to, in my opinion, I, I keep repeating this over and over again, as inflation continues at this type of a pace, albeit slowing, which is good as a whole, but you can see last year at this time, it was a 6% inflation rate. So this is 3.1% over that uh, you know, over that from last uh, year, last year's rate. Uh, so, bottom line is, uh, your your the value of your dollar is worth less today than it was yesterday, and worth less than it was a year ago, and worth less than it was two years ago. Uh, so, uh, it, it, what I would suggest is you're talking to prospects or positioning this to your franchise candidates, reminding them that it is a real thing, and I I, I never want someone to feel pressured into buying or purchasing a franchise. But if they are serious about doing it, it, it is the absolute truth that every moment they wait, it's going to cost them more because the value of their dollar is worth less today than it was yesterday and so on. Uh, and then uh, the other aspect is just uh, with uh, the, the borrowing rates having increased over the last uh, year or so, a couple of years, um, 
it, it costs more to borrow money and the value of that money is decreasing. So if they're going to do it, especially a fixed location type business where you're going to maybe have to take out a loan, um, they're going to want to get moving on it. That's that's the reality behind it. So um, keep keep that in perspective. And then um, a, a, as as you go through that and as we looked at the unemployment rate, we know that unemployment is a discussion point with the franchisees. This is These are just real factors that are out there. So when you're talking to candidates or even current franchisees, if they're thinking about hiring someone, they need to start now or yesterday, right? They, they need to start looking now and start planning on it, maybe taking longer. So if they had planned on recruiting and finding someone in a month or so, they probably need to double or triple that time period to start recruiting, sourcing, finding the right people, going through the whole uh, whole process. Um, and by the way, uh, um, I've got a there's a podcast episode coming out here for our Multiply Your Success podcast that we release uh, with a, an interview of Scott Greenberg, who just wrote a new book uh, that he published called uh, "The uh, Stop the Shift Show." which is a book about uh, managing and leading hourly employees specific to a small business and a franchisee. Uh, it's it's a great uh, great read. I interview him. Well, that po- podcast will be coming out here in a few weeks. Um, but um, uh, just a, an interesting tie into this whole thing. He gives some suggestions about managing staff and, and recruiting and going through that. Okay, so that's on inflation, uh, inflation rate, unemployment rate. Let's talk about the consumer sentiment report that's published by the University of Michigan. This this has been uh, reported for uh, many, many years. Uh, uh, I think over five decades now it's been going. Um, and you can see here that the overall consumer sentiment report here in, is of January is the highest rank rating it's been since uh, just an estimate. Judging from this chart, it looks like about mid year 2021. So somewhere around maybe third quarter of 2021, this is the highest rating essentially coming up on, uh, in about two and a half years. Um, <clears throat> so we see the steady incline from a, a bottom out here back in mid 2022. And you see this consumer sentiment uh, growing and it, it's increasing at the rate of growth right now. So to me, that means things are probably in greater demand. So for your business, for your service, for your products, uh, there's a good chance right now you're feeling uh, an increase in demand in your business uh, based on the fact that consumers just have a more positive outlook on things. They're feeling a little more comfortable going out and buying stuff just stuff, buying products, services, going out to dinner, buying lunch, what, whatever that might look like. So you might notice that your inventory is running lower faster or you're feeling the stress uh, of uh, running a busy operation. So all positive things. And these are things, by the way, for your franchisees uh, that you can point to to say consumer sentiment is on the rise. And this trend has been ongoing coming up. It's coming up on almost uh, two years that it's been trending upward now. Uh, so it looks like it's going, it's continuing uh, as a whole to go up. And that probably also means for franchise prospects in your pipeline, they are feeling a little more comfortable making that decision. Their some sentiment is a little more positive on the up, upswing. So just know that if you have someone that's been in your pipeline for a little while, now might be a great time to go back to them and ask them, where are you in your process? You know, uh, uh, we're seeing some signs from some macro indicators that now is looking like a pretty good time to get into this. What do you think? And see where they're at with it. Okay. Oh, next report here is the uh, business formation statistics. This was just released on Valentine's Day, Feb- February 14th, so just two days ago. And it shows the new business formations, this is from the U.S. Census Bureau, across the whole country, and they aggregate this. And this report just, it, it always uh, just, it, it really is hard to comp- for me to comprehend. Every single month I've, I've looked at this for the last three or uh, coming up on almost four years now. You can see last month there were over 450,000 new businesses that formed. 450,000, okay? Now, if you look back in 
before 2020. That's kind of our, our benchmark that we all look at, right? Before COVID, essentially. But we look pre-2020, and we look before. Well, for about the three years, uh, for 2018, 2019, uh, for those two years beforehand, it was right on the edge of 300,000 new startups every single month. You can see this right on the chart. If you're listening in, the line just bounces right below or just ticks over just a, a, a bit right at 300,000. COVID hits, we see a drop, then a big spike, and we kind of see this big up and down a little bit, and then it stabilizes at over 400,000 new startups. And back in 2023, over a year ago, we see it start to climb from the low 400,000s on up to now it's trending and averaging at over 450,000 new start new business startups. So think about that. That's a 50% increase from where it was before 20 pre 2020. 50 percent increase. So what does that mean to me it's significant for you as a franchisor. And if you're starting a business, if you're thinking about franchising your business, to me this is maybe the most significant statistic that we talk through. Um, I, I love the manufacturing PMI. That's probably my second favorite. This is my first favorite here because what it tells us is that new business startups, the, the, it, it, the idea of entrepreneurship, self-employment, doing something on my own, being the captain of my own ship, Right, being my own boss. These are the the, the catchphrases in franchising, but it, but these are the drivers for why people buy franchises and why people go into business for themselves. They want to be their own boss. And uh, if if you think about that, this this, this be your own boss, be an entrepreneur, self employed. It is in the air. It is on the minds and in the it is in the hearts and on the minds of people across the United States. So you must assume that as people are inquiring about buying your franchise, that it is very real because someone, they're going to do something and whether they're going to buy your franchise or another, in most cases, they're either going to buy your franchise or not. In this case, maybe they might be looking to buy your franchise or create an alternative side hustle that they start on the side, um, that they look to get growing or uh, join the gig economy as is what's happening here. So just some things for you to be thinking about as you're talking to people, uh, th there's a buzz, an entrepreneurial buzz that's going on and be prepared for that and be talking to your candidates about it and uh, recognize that your candidates have this on their mind too. So they are serious. They are buyers. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick highlight here. The International Franchise Association released on February 14th as well on Wednesday, their Franchise Business Outlook, uh, the Franchise Business Outlook report that they publish, and they, they publish one of these every year. They take a look at all 50 states. Uh, I'm only going to go over the highlights here for the summary. Uh, we'll do a separate session on the actual uh, report that we can share to talk through the entire, to go through the whole report. It's a very robust and large report. Here are the highlights. So uh, let me zoom in on this for us so you can read it if you're following along. Okay, so it says the overall number of franchise establishments will increase this year by 15,000 units in 2024, or a 1.9% growth rate to 821,000 units in franchising. They will add approximately 221,000 jobs to the U.S. economy, growing at 3%. So a 3% growth rate, that's pretty, pretty quick, uh, pretty uh, uh, large growth, I think. Uh, total output for franchise businesses, which is the measure of total economic activity in nominal dollars, will increase by 4.1%, uh, and it'll grow to 893.9 billion in 2024, which is up from 858.5 billion in 2023. So we're seeing that that's up uh, about 35 billion in total uh, revenue between all franchises. Uh, the franchise GDP will grow. Uh, increasing at a pace of 4.3%. And personal services and QSRs, quick service restaurants, will experience the strongest growth of any industry is their prediction. And they see the growth. So for franchise development professionals, this is the one that probably matters most to you. I'm just going to call it out. <laughs> so if you're uh, checking your email or a phone message, this is the section time you want to listen into this right now. It says, growth in the Southeast and Southwest 
will outpace the rest of the U.S. franchise market in 2024. The top 10 states for franchise growth include Texas, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Maryland, Arizona, Colorado, and Virginia. And Virginia. California and Washington are forecast to be the slowest growing states for franchising at minus 4.2% and minus 2.3% respectively. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you're in franchise development, uh, I'd be looking at these top 10 states starting at Texas on down as target markets for your growth. If you're not sure, if you're unsure about what to do, where to grow, where to expand, I'd be considering these because this is where the... the um, IFA is predicting the greatest growth opportunities for you. And if you don't want to just add new markets for the sake of adding new markets, look at your top markets, top into top states that you're expanding into or interested in expanding into. And I'd consider increasing your budget. And if any one of these top 10 states are listed as one of those that you're most interested in, because it looks like you're you're likely to have the greatest uh, chance of adding new franchisees there. Okay. Uh, this is the fourth quarter from the small business index Q4. I, I believe we covered this. It showed Q4 small business index was down from Q3, uh, but up from where it was Q1 and Q2. So it looks like we had a little spike in Q3 and then it dropped back down in Q4. Um, uh, this is the 2023 Q4 Vistage CEO confidence index report. Uh, so let's see. Oh, I need to hit view the analysis uh, so we can take a look at this. And you can see that we are for Q4, it's at an 82.0 confidence report that CEOs are having. So it's on an upswing. So uh, interesting, you can see that right around Q2 of 2022, you see this uh, CEO confidence index. If you're not familiar with Vistage, by the way, it's a CEO uh, mastermind coaching business that has CEOs of small to mid to large businesses across the country, and they survey their members. And so what I find interesting, you see the CEO confidence report. Now let's take a look back at the uh, University of Michigan consumer sentiment report interesting correlation here. Now, I, I, I find it interesting that the general consumer sentiment, you see mid-year 2022 start on the upswing here, and it's accelerating now. Now, let's go back to the Vistage for the CEO focused on those business leaders, folks like you who are maybe attending or franchise uh, leaders that are attending here. And you can see here that we see that upswing occurring. The uh, growth rate seems to have popped a little bit, but it remains to be seen. But overall, we look back, there's a consistent upward swing from mid-year 2022, from Q2 of 2022 up to 2024. So we're seeing that now as a trend across a few different categories for us here. Uh, and then if we look at, where did it go? Here it is. Uh, I'm just looking to see if our new business startups, a fairly similar time period, about mid-year 2022, if we zoom in here, you can see about halfway through 2022 is when we started to see another upswing in new business startups, uh, right, right at that point, right around there, maybe early 2022, we started seeing that go from about 400,000 on up to 450,000. Okay. Uh, so next is the uh, small business startup sentiment index, because these are the people who are inquiring for you right now. The people are, what are they thinking, feeling, where are their hearts and minds today, this very second, these budding entrepreneurs. And I love this small business startup sentiment uh, uh, index that's produced by Franchise Ventures through franchiseinsights.com. So this was released February 7th, 2024. And it says, startup sentiment surges to 13-month high. Over 91% of aspiring franchisees expect 2024 launch and Gen Z co age cohort surges to the highest month in 13 months as well. So I find that very interesting to see. So let's go through some of the data points on this report. Okay, so it says here 91.3% expect their startups within 12 months. So you can see the green on the far right is next month. So 22.5% of respondents said they're expecting to start next month. Uh, the yellow is two to three months from now, and 25% of the respondents said they're looking to start two to three months from now. 
28.8% of them said they're going to start in the next four to six months. That's this purple or uh, fuchsia type color. And then uh, this dark blue is seven to 12 months out at 15%. And the people who don't know, uh, they're just not sure. It's longer than a year, but they don't know. That's 8.8%. So that's where we get the 91% looking to start in 2024. But what I find most interesting is that the overwhelming majority of folks, uh, we're talking here, what is this, almost 75%, just short of 75% of uh, the respondents are looking to start in the next six months. So I think that's worth noting, which means new year, maybe some new resolutions, maybe some pent over frustration that I didn't accomplish my goal of starting my business last year. I'm going to do it now. So if you have leads in your pipeline, I know we're seeing it with our clients that we're working with. Their pipelines are bubbling and working and doing really, really well. Uh, we're seeing a lot of leads and a lot of positive activity coming out. Um, and uh, this report helps uh, validate the sentiment we're seeing within our micro leads. They're seeing the sentiment here. Okay. Um, so it says funding is still key. 67% still see funding as a big factor. So let's, let's take a look at this. What, what is a driver that is causing people to think that is their biggest factor to starting or launching their business? Well, 69.9% .9 of them, almost 70% said funding or access to credit is their number one issue, okay? Economic climate is number two at 42.5% of the respondents said, uh, that's a big concern of mine. And then everything else, uh, it falls below that. We have the stock market. People are concerned at 21.9% are worried about the stock market. Now we see a little surge here on that. Let me see if I can zoom in so we can see that a little bit better for everyone. <clears throat> so you can see here the stock market uh, surged. Um, not terribly surprising given that we see, we've see we seen some volatility in the stock market recently in this report. This, these were, uh, surveys were done within the last few weeks. Okay, so 21.9%. Political changes at 20.5% is number four. And then everything else is underneath of that, okay? And uh, to me, what this is saying to you as a franchisor, as a franchise development professional, seven out of 10 people you're talking to are worried about having the ability to fund or get access to funding to buy your franchise. So that means you ought to figure out some kind of a solution for this, whether if, you're, if you have the funding or the backing or the resources and you can do in-house financing, that might be a great option to update your item 10 and your FDD for that. Um, if not, then partnering or creating a strategic relationship with one of these uh, franchise uh, lending organizations, there are, there are some really great ones out there. And by the way, if you're going to IFA this weekend, you're going to be able to meet a whole bunch of them at the International Franchise Convention coming up uh, this weekend. But uh, seven out of 10. So have a solution or a plan in place to provide to your franchisee, franchise candidates. And my suggestion would be is that if you, uh, before they even bring it up, let them know you have a solution. Here's our solution. By the way, if you think you might need to get a loan or access to funding, if you don't have a banker you want to talk with, here's some franchise focused um, uh, uh, lending companies that can help, help you through that process. Uh, and then uh, economic climate is number two. So really, to me, that's what we're talking about here. So now you're armed. You're armed with information to be able to share and go through with your franchise prospects that maybe they're wondering, maybe they are a little nervous about the economic climate. What's going to happen every time there is an election year like we are for, or, or a, a, a federal election on a national basis for a presidential election? Uh, you know, the whole year seems to be tied up with this worry and tension for a presidential election. And then once it's over, it's like, oh, wait, that's it. Uh, <laughs> the, the election's over and uh, we're kind of back to business as it was before. Um, so, uh, you know, this is a year where people are going to be talking about these kinds of things. And so having some information to share with them, uh, to help them. And these are oftentimes macro and small, these are macro and small business related. Um, if there's something specific to your industry, Go to your industry association or other types of data resources that you can pull 
to showcase what's going on. There, there, uh, almost every industry has data points and research available that that can be shared. Okay, uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, here we go. This is the. All right, this is what I wanted to show. What is the estimated age of the people who are starting businesses right now? So in January, 22% of the buyers, franchise buyers, were baby boomers, okay? 46.3% uh, were Gen Xers, those between 1965 and 1980. So uh, Gen Xers are going to be your largest cohort of prospective buyers. Uh, then we have uh, millennials, Generation Y, uh, at 22%. So boomers and uh, gen and millennials are e even at 22%. Uh, and then we see uh, Gen Z making a big splash this month at 9% of buyers uh, coming into the market. So uh, we do have some silent generations, a very small percentage mixed in there. Those That's those that were born before 1946. I do want to mention that. Um, but the overwhelming majority, you're looking somewhere between Gen Y and and Gen X and baby boomers is the majority of buyers with this influx from Gen Z to be aware of, uh, that you may have some younger buyers coming in. Okay. Um, uh, one thing I'd like to talk about, which is uh, this uh, Fran Connect, which is a franchise management system. Uh, this week, they ran a webinar on how franchise sales and marketing professionals are using artificial intelligence in franchise sales efforts. And there was a company, I believe it's Lumen.ai, uh, that, that came in and presented, and they've been doing some work with some franchisors. And the franchisor panel shared how they're using uh, artificial intelligence in their franchise sales and marketing efforts. It was really interesting. And um, I found it very interesting as uh, AI, as as I've described as is this year, uh, and, and it transitioned last year, but especially this year, will transition from a novelty into a real tool uh, that's, that will be used by sales and marketing professionals uh, across the board and in many, many industries. Uh, we saw that transition start last year, but I think this is the year where it's going to be real uh, heavy adoption. Uh, so, uh, But this was February 8th. You can uh, get a recording or watch a recording of it. I, I, I encourage it. Uh, I have no uh, gain with Fran Connect here, but I just found the information they shared great. So if you have a window of time and can watch that, I, I think it, it'll be worth it, especially if you're wondering, how can I use artificial intelligence in my franchise sales efforts? What does that look like? What can we do there? Um, ah, Final report here, uh, Guidant Financial. By the way, this is one of those uh, uh, lending franchise uh, lending companies that you can reach out to. I've worked with Guidant for goodness 10, 15 years, um, and they've been great in in working with our clients and others and helping with franchise lending. And they put together small 2024 small business trends and small business reports that talks about plans for expansion. Uh, 24 percent of uh, owners said they plan to increase staff, 18% invest in digital marketing, 17% expand or remodel. Okay, The top industries are retail, food and restaurant, health and beauty, residential, commercial construction. Um, their top states, Texas, California, Florida, Georgia for their top four states. And some other great uh, data here. Uh, let's see, what does it say? Uh, do you expect the business your business to survive today's economy. I found this interesting. So do you expect your business to survive today's economy? 77% said yes, 5% said no, and 18% said unsure. So right, almost literally right at that 80-20 rule uh, that we can see here um, to uh, to get that going. So uh, that is, uh, that. Uh, that's our uh, overview. And then the final chart I'd like to show is the top business categories. Now, as I've been looking at this, if we go to franchising data, this is on franchiseinsights.com. Let me go to by uh, category. And uh, these categories really seem, because they actually have business opportunities here, travel, lodging, these seem off from what they have been in the past. So I went to business opportunities by category, and these 
listings here look like what the franchise categories have looked like over the last several years. So I am I think that there was a swap or a switch here. Uh, so I'm going to view the business opportunity category on FranchiseInsights.com as the trends for what actually is franchising. And so it says home services is at 29.5% of all inquiries were for uh, 29.5%. So almost 30% of leads generated in the last 90 days were for home services. 12 and almost 12.4% for senior and healthcare, 12.3% for cleaning and maintenance, 11.2% for business services, 7.1% food and restaurant, 4.4% uh, education, 3.8% financial services, 3.7% pet services, 3.5% for child related, and 3.3% for real estate. So, what does this mean? Well, basically, if you're in one of these top 10 categories, it's generally going to be easier to generate leads for your business versus not being in one of these industries. So, uh, you know, you can look at it and think, well, I should be able to get volume. It's going to increase uh, the uh, need. So it might be a little bit easier in these categories. If you're not in one of these categories or industries, well, then uh, what it probably means is you, you, you should be prepared for it either taking a little bit longer to get the number of leads you're looking for, or just expect that it's going to, uh, might cost a, a little more time to attract and find the quantity of leads that are coming through. So uh, that is our session today. Thank you all for sticking with me. Are there any questions? Uh, I went over here um, uh, almost 10 minutes here. So thanks for hanging with me. Do we have questions from the audience while, while you're here before we break for the day? Well, I'm not seeing anything come in. So as a final plug, uh, be on the lookout for this. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're a YouTube person. It's Big Sky Franchise Team on YouTube. Our podcasts and these webinars will populate there. Uh, uh, subscribe to our Franchise Your Business podcast. That's where you'll get these recordings and other content we produce. And then our Multiply Your Success podcast, which, by the way, a week ago we had the guest, the uh, CEO of Tropical Smoothie Cafe, Charles Watson, who shared with us how they grew from, uh, how they added a thousand franchises in 10 years, which is pretty remarkable. It's it's definitely worth a listen and how, how they did that while keeping franchisee satisfaction up and growing unit economics. So thank you all for being here. Have a great uh, weekend and we will see you back next week for our next webinar session. Take care all.